If there's one thing about the Elder Scrolls series that fans can agree on, it is that Jeremy Soule's music for Morrowind, Oblivion, and especially Skyrim is amazing. His four-score CD for Skyrim remains his magnum opus, a work of art that for video games, in my opinion, has still not been surpassed nearly a decade later. And yet, with the recent release of The Elder Scrolls Blades, Bethesda chose to have Fallout series composer Inon Zor provide the score for the game. In this video, we will be discussing if Bethesda has cut ties with Jeremy Soule for The Elder Scrolls VI, and if so, why? First, I want to point out that much of what we will be discussing in this video is fact, but the consequences of the facts and what has happened around Jeremy Soule, mainly how Bethesda has perceived it, is purely speculation. So we will start with Jeremy's last Bethesda game, and that was Skyrim. For his work on the Skyrim soundtrack, Jeremy was nominated for seven awards and won three of them. Shortly after the release of Skyrim in 2012, Jeremy announced that a four-disc master compilation of all of the music from the game would be made available through his own distribution company, Direct Song. Direct Song was a joint venture that Jeremy and his brother Julian started in 2005 as a way to sell physical copies of Jeremy's video game's soundtracks. This was in a time where CD soundtracks still sold a lot, plus he would often include promotional materials and even sign some copies of his soundtracks. That said, he also did not offer his soundtracks as digital downloads, so unless you wanted to pirate them, you were forced to order from his website. Unfortunately, production and fulfillment of his soundtracks was not Jeremy's strong suit. This business, before it shut down, was involved in a class action lawsuit stemming from simply not sending products that people ordered. You can find a Reddit thread, among many other articles about Direct Song specifically, that detail how poorly they treated customers and fulfilled orders. Personally, in 2012, I ordered the signed Skyrim 4-disc soundtrack, and while it took several months, I did receive it and it was in good condition. I still have it in my game room, and it remains one of my favorite video game soundtracks ever. Still, this situation with Direct Song persisted for years before it was finally shut down. It accumulated a 1 out of 10 score on reseller ratings. In March of 2013, Jeremy launched a Kickstarter for a project called The Northerner Symphony. The project raised over $121,000 from over 4,200 backers, and was supposed to be complete by the end of 2013. Well, long story short, the project is still not complete as of mid-2019, though Soul has indicated that it has turned into multiple projects and will finally deliver by the end of this year. From 2013 up until now, though, it has been a roller coaster of bad publicity for Soul due to lack of communication, PR issues, refund problems, and more. If Bethesda's opinion of Soul soured, it was likely during this time. In 2016, during the launch of Skyrim Special Edition, Bethesda held an Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Live Orchestra at the London Palladium. They did not involve Jeremy Soule, and in fact, they didn't even tell him that they were doing it. In response to fans inquiring about this situation, Soule had this to say, quote, For the record, this concert has nothing to do with me, nor are they using any of my original scores. They had to transcribe whatever notation they are performing by ear from the recordings. This is a flawed process, as transcriptions are always fraught with errors. To be sure, I don't know who these people are and I don't endorse a concert that is trading on my name and music that has absolutely no oversight or involvement on my part. For my fans, I just want you to know what you're getting if you pay to attend this concert. Be wary. I never complain about covers of my music, but when they are charging fans for an experience that's implied to be authentic, the fans deserve to know what this is." End quote. Obviously, with Soul going public with a statement like this, the situation between him and Bethesda had escalated. Since that time, Jeremy has somewhat softened his stance, however. More recently, he has been supportive of Bethesda's use of different composers for their Elder Scrolls games. Since Skyrim, Bethesda has launched the Elder Scrolls Online as well as the Elder Scrolls Blades. They did not contact Soul for work on either. In fact, when fans found out Inon Zor would be providing the soundtrack for Blades, Soul had the following to say in a series of tweets. Quote, While I have not said much about this out of courtesy to Bethesda, I would never turn my back on the Elder Scrolls, and I believe that my involvement would hinge on a creative decision on their part and where they want to take the franchise. To confirm, I am currently not involved with the Elder Scrolls VI. 
You'll find Anon Zor is scoring blades, and I'm confident in the work that he will do. Brad Derrick at the Elder Scrolls Online has done a fine job. Either of these composers could score the Elder Scrolls 6. It may be time for new creativity for the Elder Scrolls 6, but I'm ready if Bethesda calls. I'd like to discourage any petitions or lobbying as much as I appreciate enthusiasm for my music. This will backfire. It's really early and I'm simply trying to set expectations with my fans and let you all know that while I'm excited about the future, keep an open mind. Mostly, I've just been worn out in answering, are you working on the Elder Scrolls 6? with no comment. I hope I cleared the air. I appreciate enthusiasm for my work and I try to respond to everyone, so removing that one question from the queue has been helpful for me. There really isn't a formula for when a company decides to hire a composer. Sometimes, and for whatever reason, composers are hired at the very last weeks of a project. But meanwhile, the next Elder Scrolls score is Blades with Anon Zor. I'm excited about what he will write. End quote. So Jeremy Soule makes it abundantly clear that he would like to work on the Elder Scrolls 6. It doesn't appear on the surface, however, that Bethesda wants him on the project. Soul also confirmed that the opening drums sequence for the Elder Scrolls 6 reveal at E3 2018 was not composed by him. So where does that leave us? Well, if you are a Jeremy Soule fan like myself, there is a glimmer of hope. On May 7th of 2019, Bethesda UK tweeted, quote, It's only Tuesday and we're still early on in our Bethesda soundtrack week. Have a listen to Kind's piece by Jeremy Soule from Skyrim to take it easy. Full album available on iTunes. End quote. As far as I can tell, that's the first time in quite a while that Bethesda has publicly acknowledged Soul by name, even if it is just a tweet. Does it mean anything? Well, probably not. Soul is an amazing composer, evidently a poor businessman, and also seems to work better under strict deadlines. That doesn't mean that his music isn't amazing, though. For myself, it is hard to imagine an Elder Scrolls VI without a Soul soundtrack to accompany the journey. I think we can also assume that Soul is not providing the score for Starfield either. The good news is that if there is one thing that we have that can heal whatever wounds there are between Bethesda and Jeremy Soul, it is time. And for The Elder Scrolls VI, we have plenty of it. For those of us holding out hope that Jeremy Soul is contracted to provide the score to the game, well, all hope is not lost. It could simply be that the game is so far off that Bethesda isn't ready to have the soundtrack worked on. They could have just quickly thrown the E3 2018 trailer together with some generic drum beats that sound something like what you'd hear for an Elder Scrolls game, and called it a day. All of that being said, if I had to put my paycheck on the table, I would say that Bethesda has likely moved on from Jeremy Soule and will contract with another composer to provide the score for the Elder Scrolls 6. Why they moved on from Soule, we will probably never know. Perhaps they looked at his other business practices and decided that they didn't want the Bethesda name dragged through that kind of mud, or at least being associated with what some would consider to be shady business dealings. And, while the direct sound situation has been resolved, since, well, it evidently went out of business, he still hasn't delivered on his Kickstarter project and it has been over six years. Maybe Bethesda is taking a wait-and-see approach regarding that. Maybe he is just a pain to work with. And maybe... Bethesda thinks that they can get someone better, cheaper, or both. They are a business after all, so it could simply be a numbers game. Who knows? What I do know is that whoever steps into the role of composer for The Elder Scrolls VI will have some big shoes to fill. What are your thoughts on this topic? Do you think that Jeremy Soule will work on The Elder Scrolls VI when it is all said and done? Let's discuss in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe click that bell icon. And as always, thank you so much for watching.